Meet Nicole Parrish, an incredibly talented, autistic artist with an intense love for insects. Using her collection as reference, she paints beautiful moths, butterflies, beetles, bumblebees, cockroaches, and cicadas. The more insects she learns about, the more her collection expands, and the more paintings she can create. Her artistic process is heavily influenced by the natural world. Here, we begin to see how it is all connected. All I'm doing is just painting what I'm observing. Uh, it comes into a huge part with just what I'm seeing and the inspiration with how I observe the insects that I take care of or the specimens that I have and how I paint them. It's a way of like documenting or writing down what I'm observing. Nicole loves the technical details and their place in the artistic process. She believes that the more you know about your subject, the more you will appreciate it. Um, I love the way they move and their, just their biological structure and how they work together and interact with each other. It's just so fascinating and how much they just impact the world and nature. It's so cool to learn about. Marissa Harrison, Thanksgiving Point's chief entomologist, explains that the best way to observe is, quite truly, whatever way works for you. You can look at them through displays, you can watch them fly all around you, or you can even get hands-on with a crawler. I think the butterfly biosphere is a one-of-a-kind experience because of the way we emphasize exploring and discovering. It's, it's not like we're trying to impart specific information about all these different bugs. We're giving everyone a chance to experience the bugs in their own way and to take away whatever it was that had an impact on them rather than specific messaging that we're trying to get across. Uh, for example, we were doing a, a handling with a giant stick insect with guests and we talked about how they probably have poor eyesight um, and they were moving their hands above the bug and we realized it actually could tell there was a hand above them. Um, and so this family made an inference that, oh, maybe it has poor eyesight, but it can see light versus dark. And that was just a very, um, they enjoyed making that discovery. It wasn't something that I told them. These observations are intended to excite you and make you want to learn more. Reading about things, conducting experiments, and doing research on her subjects is the part that Nicole gets the most carried away in. Um, having a greater understanding of the important roles that they have and just seeing how complex and yet at the same time simple that they can be is just really cool to learn about and exciting. I think science and art are definitely related uh, the science part, you know, observations helps you see the different shapes, the different colors, the different forms, different behaviors that these bugs or plants are employing to survive. Um, and then, you know, the, the art part is appreciating the diversity of those things. Anyone who is interacting with the natural world in some way is both an artist and a scientist. You are making observations and learning about the world around you, then are mixing those observations with your interpretation and experience. Because so often art feels like free expression and science feels like calculated work, we can forget how much they work together. But what is art if not seeing something differently than you did before or finding beauty or complexity in the world around you? Isn't science the same thing? For me, at least it gives me a greater respect of the world and what I can do to help and take care of it. The art and the science, they're both a way of observing and learning, um, so just have fun discovering new things.